All right, so this is going to be a fun little uh, live stream, a bit of a, an experience. So we might as well start straight away. Now, what I've decided to do, um, purely because I need ideas for live streams, and that is to, um, I've decided to do a live stream where we just go through and actually build something. So instead of my other videos where they are kind of planned beforehand and I know what I'm going to talk about, this is actually full on, well, it is kind of planned, but the goal of this is to actually build something over a few nights, not consecutively because I'm off to Drupal South this week, which is a conference um, in Sydney. So I'm going to be having fun there, but... That is, um, that is to say that, yeah, what I plan to do is actually go through the process of building a full site and taking it step by step. So tonight, what we're going to focus on is setting up, and I've got slides here, have to have slides, of course. We're going to focus on setting up just the project. So that is setting up DDEV as our De development environment and setting it up locally. Well, I've already got it installed. Um, and also setting it up, um, setting up the project and also making sure Xdebug and PHP Storm work well. Then the second part is putting it all into a GitHub repo so everyone can see it. And then finally, we're going to just, um, yeah, create the content types and attach a few fields. And we're going to probably utilize some AI to help us define these content models uh, because sometimes it's just best to say, you know, what would you recommend? Um, all right, cool. So let me just make sure everything is working. So if you do have any questions, please just chuck them in. Let me just put in the YouTube link in LinkedIn. So we're streaming on multiple platforms and hopefully get a few good watches. All right. Okay, so what are we going to build? Well, let's go back to the beginning. Really sure I've had a slide for this, but essentially what I wanna do is I wanna build a project management tool in Drupal because one of the benefits I think with Drupal, and I'll probably talk about this more in the future, is that Drupal is great at being used like a database management system or like an access, Microsoft access, kind of like a, where you create your database because you can easily create your content models, your fields and your views. And, and, and Drupal just makes it so easy. And believe it or not, one of my first projects, professional projects, probably, yeah, I'll say it's a professional project, was setting up an internal CRM using just Drupal 5, I think, because we just needed something internally when I was working on a support support team where we're just sharing contact details. And I thought, well, Drupal can do it. I can host it on my Windows machine using MAMP. And all I did is I created a contact content form, uh, con sorry, a contact content type hmm. and created a bunch of fields, created a view, and I was able to build a CRM system. So then I thought, okay, you know, that's where things got me going with Drupal. Um, but I do think now there's 20,000 different ways of building a website. And especially on the front end, there's all these front end stuff. But Drupal at its core is still a content modeling tool. So what we're going to do is build a project management system. Eventually, we're going to style it. It's going to happen in, an, in an, another bunch of videos. I'll try and keep this going. But... We're just going to have fun with this and just see where, where we go. Because I noticed I also got a lot of comments whenever something breaks in one of my streams. They're always like, oh, it's good to see you debugging things. Well, you're going to see me debugging things now because we're building a project. So let's have fun with this. All right. So what we're going to do, first of all, is set up DDEV. Now, I've already gone ahead and installed it, but let's just go to the website. 
because trust me, you don't want to see homebrew spend 20 minutes compiling stuff and then things kind of break. All right. So for people who don't know, uh, DDEV is a development environment and it is Docker based. So sorry, container based. So you can run it with, uh, with other containerization systems. I'm running it on a Mac. And what I want to do is set it up. So I've already gone ahead and run brew install. Um, where is it? DDEV. So I've gone ahead and done it and it's set everything up. Now, what I need to do is open up one of my uh, terminals. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I just, the reason why I'm counting is because I zoom it in 12 times. All right. So here we have a command line. Okay. That's it. Simple command line. Now, the first thing you want to do is go into a folder. So what, what, what we're going to do is we're just going to create a um, project. And what I want to do is make sure I'm in this project. So I, so we're going to call this project, um, project D. I don't know. I just couldn't come up with a good name. You know, we'll see. <laughs> we can call it whatever we want, but I will just call it project D. And um, here I've got a, a build project, but I want to create a specific one for this live one. So what we're going to do is create a project D dash live. Okay. So this is going to be the one that we're going to be building out. And so I'll go into the live project. And what I'm going to do is simply start off by using a um, project type. So that is ddev config project equals, oh, sorry, project type equals Drupal 10. Now, if we jump back over here, they, they pr probably don't really give you a good example. Let's go to the docs because you can actually use this for a for a lot of other um, CMSs. It's not just a Drupal thing. You can use it, here you go. Craft CMS, Django, Drupal, Expression Engine. Whoa, that's old school. Uh, uh, Moodle, Python, Laravel, that's good. Typo3, you know, there's a, there's a whole bunch. It's not just PHP and it's not just Drupal. But if we come down to Drupal, this is a good example. So I'm pretty much following this example here. And you do have these project types. So let's go ahead and continue typing that out. So what we're going to do is type in Drupal. Then we want the doc root to equal web and we want then create doc root. Now all of this can be changed because this essentially just sets a config file. So you can change it to whatever you want later. It doesn't really matter. So if we hit enter, let's hope that is, that, that is all correct and hit enter, it's going to go ahead and create a config file. Brilliant. Now, if we take a look in here, you will see a ddev and you will see this config file in here. So you can see it right here. And what we can do is if we take a look in this, you'll see that there are a lot of items that we can modify here. So we have project uh, type version. So if you want to change a version, all this other stuff, and then you have a whole bunch of other things, but we're not going to worry about that for two, for, for now. All right. So now that everything has been set up, let's just clear that. Now what we need to do is simply run ddev start. And now this is going to go ahead and make sure you have Docker installed. Um, this is now going to go ahead and create everything. If you, you're doing this for the first time, it's going to probably be a little slower because it needs to download all the, all the containers, but for brevity, um, for the speed of this, I've gone ahead and done, um, and already done it. So here we have our um, actual URL. And I do believe if we come along here, let me just, we are going to get a forbidden. And why is that? Well, if we take a look in here, we don't have much. I mean, we have a web directory. Let's go in there, have a look. Sites. Oh, I think we probably have a few scaffolding pieces of content there. We do. Okay. We don't have much there. Actually, let's just open this up um, so I can see it in here. We're going to set up PHP Storm eventually, but you can see here, we do not have much. Okay. We've got a bit of scaffolding and things like that. All right. Now what we need to do is run Composer and actually download our, our site. So let's 
jump in. And where is it? So now, we'll, now we need to just download good old Composer. And what you can do, because if you type this in, right, you do have a lot of options here. Um, so what we can do, I do believe if you type in the dev SSH, you can SSH into the container because it is running. Yeah, so I'm, I'm in there right now. Um, and so if I exit out of that and I do run, let me, let me bring that up. Ddev uh, composer create Drupal slash what is it recommend project. So this is just going to run composer in Ddev and it's going to go ahead and that did not find it. Why did that not find it? I probably spelled something wrong. Um, create recommended recommended project. There we go. It's my spelling. I'm a terrible speller. I am grateful I live in a world where I can, where I don't have to worry about spelling. Trust me. I often do text, uh, text to, no, 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 what is it? Speech to text. So you can often see me um, talk into my Mac saying environments, because I can never spell environments correctly. Or whenever I have to do, what is it? Composer with dependencies. Never can spell dependencies correctly. So I always do text-to-speech dependencies. And honestly, the Mac uh, speech-to-text, sorry, this Mac, the Mac speech-to-text is absolutely terrible. In this day and age, it should be a lot better. Anyway, it's a bit of a rant. All right. So now we've gone ahead and we have downloaded uh, Drupal. So if I jump into... Um, what is it? VS Code. We should see Drupal. Awesome. All right, cool. That's in there. The next thing we need to do is drush, or as people, some people eloquently call it, drush. So let's install that. So essentially, if you want to run Composer in DDEV, just put in DDEV in front and just run your normal Composer commands and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right. So everything's all good. For some reason, it always chucks this in. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe that's something I should look at. Anyway, we will look at that some other time. All right, well, we do have a comment here. All right, this is why I use aliases, preferably use aliases mistyping. Yeah, that's true. That is true. It's a comment about using aliases. The things are I jump around too many pro projects too many times. I always have aliases set up, but then I change machines and I, or I format my, my machine. Well, when I say format, you can see how old I am because I'm, I used to form, I format, but essentially every year, whenever I update to a new Mac OS, I, I, I very rarely upgrade during Christmas when it's downtime, I always reinstall everything. <laughs> and luckily the new MacBooks, as of like a couple of years ago, you can just do a factory reset. You don't have to do the whole disk inventory and stuff like that. Okay. So all right, get in there, get in there, get in there. All right. So let me just bring up. No, it's not going to work. All right, that's all right. All right, so we've done Drush. And now if we go to our site, it's going to, it should bring up the installation, but I'm a lead hacker. So what I'm going to do, I'm sick of typing. I'm just going to do the standard installation. Okay, so Drush, site install, site admin, site ad and password admin. And of course, hit that. And it's going to go ahead and install it for us so we don't have to install. Perfect. And finally, if we type in Drush ULI, it's going to give us a login URL. And I do have a, a separate browser that I use, not my normal browser. We hit that and we go straight into our Drupal site. Perfect. Let me install that. Now let me increase it. And let's also change the name to, what is it? Project D. All right. All right. So done that. Got a basic site set up. And that is all using 
So if we jump over to, where is it? Um, VS Code, pretty basic. Okay, we've simply installed it. Now what I wanna do is set up uh, PHP Storm. Because don't get me wrong, I do like VS Code, but for PHP development, I prefer PHP Storm. And I, and I, and I do use VS Code for everything else. And I do find it funny when you talk to developers and they're like, oh, what, you use PHP Storm? It's so bloated, so this and that. And I do want to make a video about this because in my illustrious career of like 15, oh, nearly 20 years, Jesus, getting old, of developing websites, do you know how many editors I've used? I, I've probably used about 10 or 15. And honestly, the editor doesn't matter. I don't know why, people, why developers get so dog, dog, dogmatic about editors. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what, what quality hammer you use, as long as you get the drop done, who cares? All right, let's open up, open up PHP Storm. Let's close that off. And what I'm gonna do, set up a new project and come along in here. No, not that one. Refresh, no, refresh in there. Come on, why isn't this refreshing? Oh, give me one second. Maybe I have gone into the wrong area. No, 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 not that one. All right, let's close that off. Let's close that again. And this is why I shouldn't use PHP Storm. Because it's not, it's not refreshing. Oh, where is it? It's all right. I'm in the right folder. All right, again, new existing project. Come along in here, refresh, there we go. Project, and then go ahead and create, trust it. And it's gonna use up a ton of CPU to index everything. Like, yeah, I understand PHP Storm slow sometimes, I get it. And it's funny, when you actually upgrade between versions, it keeps this massive cache folder that I've realized that it's ends up being like a couple of gig and it is absolutely crazy. Yeah, that's it. In, um, in, in, uh, there's a comment in YouTube. Yep, notepad plus plus plus. Yes, exactly. I, I remember Aptana. Uh, what is it? Aptana was a good one. NetBeans, editor I've used, Eclipse, PHP Studio, Gedit when I was on, um, Ubuntu, Notepad, Notepad plus plus. NeoVim, Vim. Oh, how many others? Yeah, NetBeans. Um, there was, wasn't there Zen Studios as well? Anyway, there's a whole lot of them. All right, there we go. All right, so now we have everything set up and let's take a quick look here. And what we're gonna do, we've got a hello from Poland, hello from Australia. All right, so we have, um, I hope everyone can see that in the stream. Yeah, you can, you should be able to see that. All right, perfect. So DDEV does a few things. So if you come along in defaults, you will see that there is a D, um, settings.ddev. And um, that is actually added in, I think right down at the bottom. So if we come along in here, you can see that it's added right here. And you don't want to modify this, of course, just leave this as it is. And if you do want to modify things, come in here and just modify your either settings.php or just create a local settings.php and that's it. All right, so we've got that. That's looking good. And so now we have a working site, which is great. And if we come back into DDEV, let's take a look at a few, just before we move on, a few quick commands. Um, to actually stop the container, you can do things like, um, you can stop it if you run DDEV stop. Uh, one of the other good ones to use is DDEV logs. So this one, this just gives you a logs. Uh, logs, if you can spell it. If you pipe it, dash F, it will stream it, which is great. So if you do have errors, you can see errors. Um, well, what else, if you want to get rid of, so when you run a DDEV stop, 
that stops the container but doesn't delete content. If you do ddev delete, that actually deletes all your information, including the databases. So be careful with that. Um, you don't want to lose databases. And this is the thing, this is the problem that I've had with these containers is that sometimes they'll just randomly go kaput or they'll just die. And that's why for a lot of my other videos and a lot of my other streams, I still use MAMP, MAMP Pro. Like, yes, I'm old school, but I've had less problems with MAMP Pro because I've had performance issues with Docker-based environments. Mind you, this was back when I was on a crappy Intel, Intel machine. Now I'm on a M2 MacBook Pro. Things are a little better, I hope. Let's hope how, <laughs> let's see how things go, the CPU. Um, but yeah, I've always had issues with performance. So that's why I, I like good old, uh, good old, uh, what is it? MAMP Pro. All right. So the next thing I want to do, and always when I set up a new project is make sure PHP, so we have PHP Storm installed, which is great. Next thing is xdebug straight away. First thing, I don't, I don't fluff, fluff around. I want xdebug to work. Now, luckily for us, ddev just works out of the box and PHP Storm also works out of the box as well. Another reason why I like to use PHP Storm. I'm not plugging it. I'm not, um, what is it? Sponsored by them. I would love to be, AJ Brains. If you want to, um, if you want to sponsor me, but I just like PHP Storm for that stuff because it's easy to set up. All right, now the best way to test out if xdebug is working is first of all, let's go back here and let's go here. And what I'll do is I'll quickly show you. It's actually pretty simple. From a from a ddev standpoint, all you need to do is run ddev xdebug. Where is it? It's an example here. You just need to toggle it and that's it. Simple. Um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I do recommend that you actually switch it off if you're going to be doing a whole bunch of, if you're not really going to be using it because it does slow things down. So be aware of that. It does slow things. And if you are clicking around a lot, especially in Drupal, because honestly, we do click-based development. Um, you're going to be clicking a lot. And if it slows you down by a quarter of a second, it's going to slow you down a lot overall. So you want to only use it when you really, really need it. So to toggle it, let's test it out. First thing I'll do, well, what I like to do is let me go into my project. Well, let me fix this up. So groups, Drupal site, just so I can organize my tabs. All right, what I'll do is I'll go into configuration, performance, well, no, sorry, not performance, development, and I'll just turn off caching for now, just, to, just because I do want to put a, what is it? a breakpoint in the code. And if we go to the, a front end um, URL, and well, what we need to do is turn on ddev x debug. And this should enable it, perfect. I think if you type in, what is it, status? It's gonna show you enabled. And if we put in a breakpoint, turn on this listener. And I do believe Xdebug is set up where you don't have to pass in uh, one of the, um, I often have, I often use an, an, an extension which actually passes in some session. But if we go to the homepage, okay, there you can straight away see that it's being picked up. That was probably a bit too quick. Click on accept and bada boom, bada bing, it is working. And now you can go ahead and make your way down, which is absolutely awesome. And you can go and debug as much as you want. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I think since um, PHP 8, I cannot live without a debugger, honestly. It's the first thing I do. Every single project, I try and get a debugger to work. All right, perfect. Come back here. From, from a performance standpoint, it is actually pretty quick. Even though like it is ridiculously quick. Maybe it's my machine. Well, I paid enough for it, but it is ridiculously quick, especially for a Docker-based environment. All right, cool. What we're going to do, let's just toggle, to, uh, toggle it off for now. I think if you do, well, no, uh, toggle. Let's disable it so it's super fast. 
come back here and set it up. All right, awesome. Okay, okay, okay. So we've gotten at this point our environment set up, which is great. Let's go to here. We've got our environment set up. Everything is looking good. We've got our website. Now let's chuck this into GitHub. It's time to chuck it into GitHub. I wonder where all of my... I seem to have a lot of viewers on today, which is very uncommon. Restream is telling me I've got 25 viewers. Oh, amazing. Cool. But last week, I think I had two or three. Anyway. All right. So I've set everything up. Now let's chuck it into GitHub. And this code is going to be available because remember, we are building it out. So I'm going to go over to GitHub and here I've got a... I'm on the create page. Let's call this project... No, 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 not Drupal. Project... Oh, let's spell this. D. Let's leave that. Um, public. Webwash. It's under my webwash name. That's fine. Okay. And let's create it. Yep, yep, yep. That's all right. All right. Cool. Come along in here. Git. In it. Um, let's uh, let's just chuck all this stuff in. Why not? And well, no, 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 no. What I need to do is copy over the um. Oh, what is it? Dot ignore file. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There's always a copy here. Is this the copy that I want? Dot ignore. Yes. I do believe it is this one. Now, there is a copy. There's one I've done before. Uh, let's have a quick look. There's always one around here. I did create a test demo one recent. Oh, was this recent? No, not that one. There was a project that I recently created. Ah, this one. Here we go. All right. Hello, can you show us how to create a, a new theme? There's a comment in YouTube. Yes, eventually, but it's not going to happen tonight. It's not going to happen tonight. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Oh, we don't want that. So that's pretty much... Where can I grab that from? All right. I thought this one would have that. So vendor... Da, 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 da. All right. You know what? I'm just going to copy this. Yep. Create a folder. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to copy this. I can I always forget. And I always hate accidentally chucking in the wrong stuff. And then just copy that. Paste that in. Perfect. Now, come along in here. Let's go back to here. All right. Let's put this in. Put a readme. I'll fix it up later. And I do believe everything should be... Oh, there we go. That's looking good. That's looking good. Or is that a little too aggressive? Let me have a look at the... And this stuff right here. Settings.php. Now, I do think... Vendor core. No, it is actually fully ignoring everything. Well, at this point, let's just leave it. Um, because if you do compose reinstall, it's going to install everything and I haven't customized anything at this point. All right, let's just leave it for now. And what we'll do, commit, what is it? Burst commit. I know people hate that, but whatever. All right. Well, no. Got to put in my SSH keys. All right. And do config. Oh, what is it? I need to add a remote. Ugh, terrible. And go, what is it? Git push origin main. There we go. It's going to go ahead. And push it in. 
All right, done. Now we refresh that, it's in there. All right. I will fix all this stuff up later. Anyway, again, this is just a work in progress. I'll slowly add commit stuff in here. All right, cool. All right, done. And everything's looking good. Perfect. All righty. So. Now what I want to do. All right, so I think at this point, yeah, GitHub's ready to go. This is public, right? Is it? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, it is. All right, cool. Um, everything is good to go. Awesome. Now, config. Important. We need to export the config out. I want to store that in the repo, obviously. And what we can do is jump over here. Uh, let's go into settings.php. And I am going to... I should change it. Well, let's go. Where is it here? Config. Where's the config sync? Ah, oh, there we go. That's what I want. And what's that got to be? That needs to be dot dot. I want it. I want to keep it outside the doc root, obviously. So that's going to be dot dot config slash config sync. There we go. And let's just say, do we need to create a folder? And let's just create a folder just in case complains about it. Double sync. Awesome. Come along in here. Uh, what else? D -d 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 Dev Drush. Config export. It's going to go out. Awesome. Have a look in here. We can see our files. Perfect. Well, that config is out. By default, it will chuck this in the files directory, but yeah, you don't want to do that. Just leave it out. All right, done. Simple, easy. Okay. All right. Hey, right, cool. Thanks. Somebody says they love my tutorials. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This one's done. Now, again, commit that. Let's have a quick looksies config. All right, done. Uh, what is it? All right, mm, commit config files. Oh, git commit config files, ggp. Now I use um, ZFS, is that it? Oh my fish. So I just put in ggp for git push, uh, just git push origin main whatever so that's why so technically i should write git push origin main but it's just much easier to type in ggp or ggl for git pull git push all right okay let's check out our make sure everything is here yes it is awesome okay things looking good config is in there done all right nice Building out our site. Where are we? Oh, we smashed through this. How long have we been streaming for? <laughs> I honestly thought this was going to take longer. How long have we been going for? Half an hour. All right. Well, I might actually do a bit of site building. A bit of site building. All right. So next up. Well, we've done that. Create content types. Attach fields to content types. All right. Now, oh. For the people who have just come in and probably seeing, you know, what's happening here, uh, we are building a site over multiple nights. Not tonight and tomorrow, but over a couple of weeks. So we'll be chucking in a few nights, like, you know, once a week or something. And we're building a project, uh, project management tool using Drupal. And my goal, you know, I, I, I don't have a working site already done, but my goal is to make it as cool as possible. When I say cool make it pop. No. Um, I do want to use, I want to use Drupal as an application builder. We're building apps. And so the front end's going to be, it's still going to be Drupal. Who knows? Maybe we're going to convert it into a headless. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But I do want to utilize Tailwind and create Tailwind and go through the process of setting up that um, because you could really use, um, you could really use Drupal as a project management tool and avoid paying some type of subscription fee. Because one thing I've learned, especially during the last few years, 
is that subscription fees for SaaS products go up and they double every couple of years. So if you can kind of be in, in control of your own data and your own systems, you can easily build this stuff yourself. Essentially, I want to create my own Jira. See how it goes. Because when you think about it, the way I, you know, companies pay so much money to use Jira and they don't use it that well. They just use it for very basic things. Create projects, create a bunch of tasks, put them in a Kanban board and you're done. And that stuff can easily be created with a bit of custom code and a bit of JavaScript. Of course, we're developers. <laughs> Honestly, it can be made, like it can be so easily, I'm just going to have a sip as I'm talking, it can easily be made just by banging in a few front-end frameworks together and you're done. That's that's what I say, but we'll see, we'll see. Need to get a less, a less squeakier bottle. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. <laughs> well, yes, I've actually looked at your, um, oh, just, just, there's a comment about Tailwind. Uh, there's a comment from, I do believe he's one of the maintainers of the Tailwind uh, theme. Yes, I have looked at the Tailwind um, theme in Drupal. I have actually created my own, but one thing I like to do is I do, when I, when I learn this stuff, I do like to build them from scratch myself just so I can get a nice understanding of it. And I did copy a bunch of, I took some of your code um, just for the layouts and things like that. Um, but yeah, it is pretty good. What you can do it with Tailwind and Drupal it really does change the paradigm, especially compared to Bootstrap, but I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Now, what we need to do is come up with a schema for our project management tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little lazy. In this, in this day and age, I'm going to use a chat GPT. Well, no, actually, well, we're not technically using chat GPT. We're going to be using AI to come up with our, with our schema. And today I got, I got access. I set up APIs for a Claude. So we're going to try both. We're going to try GPT-4 and Claude 3 Op Optimus or whatever it's called, the latest one. Because I want to see what type of um, responses I get. So I use, for people who don't know, so I use, well, let me close that and create a new thing. Um, so I use a tool called Typing Mind. Let me just zoom in a bit more. Okay, does this zoom in a little bit more? No, it doesn't. Anyway, so I use a system called Typing Mind that is actually just a wrapper. So you give it APIs to ChatGPT or Claude Opus, oh, sorry, not Optimus, Opus. And you can see here, you just select what you want. Um, and it's actually much cheaper than paying a monthly fee, honestly. It's much cheaper. Um, because I think I've probably spent in the last few months 30 bucks on accessing the APIs directly. And the good thing about Typing Mind is that it's, 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 it's a one-time fee. You pay 80 bucks for it. No more subscription services. I'm sick of paying for subscription services. You know how many I've canceled because I've all doubled in price. And 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 you can always you always know when they're going to increase their prices because their emails start the same way. The first paragraph literally says that talks about how great they are and also how how and they also talk about how much free functionality they've given to you. It's like we've put in so much invested so much in our platform and by the way we're increasing the prices and you're not grandfathered in. That's why I love systems where it's a single price. Anyway, let's use this to build out our system. And um, let's take it from there. All right, so there's a comment here about, Ivan, do you recommend using config split? Uh, this is about config management. Um, config split, config split. Well, yeah, I, I mean, if, if there's... I do recommend you use config split purely if you want to have separate configuration for your different environments. So in the so in the past, I do have it. I do have a setup for development and staging, and then for production, you have your own set of config. It's great for that, absolutely. And then also your local one is set up nice, uh, can be set up. Um, but you have to make sure that when you work with developers, that they actually work with it as well. So I do I do recommend it. Um, oh yes, no, I'm just looking at the comment about, uh, just start with the starter kit and reference the implementation instead of using it directly. Yeah. That's what I ended up doing. Um, when I did create my tailwind theme, 
I noticed that when you create a bare bones Drupal theme, well, there are no layouts. No, so no twig templates are outputted out. So I, I did want to use the starter kit because it just gives you too much CSS, but I wanted the layouts and the templates. So I just copied the templates, copied them across, and then I've got access to the templates. I can go in there and chuck in Tailwind components. All right, let's do a bit of AI work because, you know, I can't, I, can't, I can't be bothered sitting down and thinking, uh, you know, of the schema, which I've been doing for like last 15 years. Trust me, every single time I build a Drupal site, the first thing you do, what content types are you going to use? What type of fields? Is the field going to be a plural field? Is it, is it category field or is it categories? Anyway, so let's use op um, Opus. So what, what we're going to do is select, I want to be a software developer. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't have a beard like this guy. I don't have this much hair. So I'm a bit offended that a software developer has this much hair. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. I did just clip it <laughs> yesterday. All right. So we need to create a project management tool written in no, sorry, no, built in Drupal. I'm actually still learning all this stuff. Built in Drupal. Can you give me a schema of the model and fields? So that'll be content types and fields because this is Drupal. This is Drupal. All right, what else, what else? Um, for example, for example, the project content type should be called, uh, content type should be called project and tasks should be task. Eh. Tasks should reference projects. All right, output a table with the content types and fields, not files, fields, please. Oh, this is riveting TV, isn't it? Please, thanks. I'm just being nice. Just so when, the, when Skynet takes over, they're like, oh, Ivan was nice to us. All right. Let me copy this because I want to see actually which one generates it. All right, let's take a look at this. This is what Claude 3 Opus generates for us. All right, content type, starting. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Team members. Okay, didn't even think of that. Tasks. All right, I do like this. All right, I do, I do like this. All right, all right, all right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so we have, all right, let's now do another one. And I will select chat GPT. This one and chuck that one in and we can compare. What? Well, let's compare it. So this one's chat GPT. No, sorry, GPT four. And this one is, the next one is called, all right. Node reference. Oh, oh, okay. I do like, well, let's have a look here. So, oh, another thing you can do is it actually chucks in the price or rough estimates of how many tokens were used. So you can see here with Claude, it was, what is that, eight cents? Yeah, pretty much eight, eight cents to run it. GPT-4 was seven. Oh, they're roughly the same price. Way less tokens though, tokens spent. Anyway, all right, so we have here, GPT-4, title, description, oh, I do like this. It actually gave us the field types for Drupal. Brilliant, okay, I'll give you that. Description, awesome. Uh, entity reference, project manager. Oh yeah, oh yeah, author too. Didn't even think of that. Status, no, we're gonna use taxonomy term for that. Due date. See, this is one thing I'm, I'm thinking of. Should this date field be a date range? Where it's a due, where it's a starting date and end date, but I do know views. Ah, 
parts of Drupal don't really support the date range module, which is annoying. Um, okay, so all right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. If we take a look at Claude, what did this give us? Oh, it pretty much gave us the same stuff. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this. Now, if somebody, please, can do, do a thing where I can just copy paste this into a Drupal site and it automatically generates it, you know what? That wouldn't be that hard to do and it'll automatically generate the content types for us. You could actually do that, honestly, without writing any um, AI stuff. If you have the content type, the field type, you can honestly do that yourself. If if GPT, if your AI can just output this stuff in a particular scheme, like standard, where it's got content type, machine name, field type, you can easily do it. You can easily do do it without writing AI AI stuff. You can you can call it AI just to get the credit or the cred. Um, but. Yeah, <laughs> we should definitely make manners in a more desirable way in the models. Absolutely, uh, yeah. All right, cool. So this is what this is what we're going to build out. Pretty simple. Let's go ahead and create our content types. Let's do a bit of site building. Let's get the fingers going and do a bit of site building. Woohoo! 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 All right, cool. Where's my site up here? Um, let me create another group. This is annoying. New group. Uh. Others, other. Let me just chuck in here. All right. Because then you can close this. Bada boom, bada bing. All right, cool. All right, let's go ahead, create some content types. So what's the first one going to be? Project. Project used for projects. Always turn this stuff off. Leave it as published. Yeah, this is something we're going to have to fig figure out because Drupal assumes everything's published, but we're building an application. So we're going to sort that out. Don't worry about that. And don't worry about that. All right. Now, we get the body. Don't want that because I want description. Let's delete that. Let's create a fields. Call this one description. Is that spelled correctly? Again, can't spell. Um, now, for people, if if I'm going too quick, I do have videos that go into in-depth details about fields and views and things like that. So you can watch those. Just head over to the YouTube channel, Webwash YouTube channel. I've got it in there. Um, because, yeah, I'm not going to be explaining as much as in-depth stuff. All right, let's create this a formatted... Um, let's create a formatted text, which means we get an editor. And I want to give it a formatted long. So text formatted long means it's going to be a long text field. So a text area, and it's going to be an editor. Because technically, you can add an editor to a text input. So it's a string field. Don't know why you would do that. If somebody can give me a good reason why to do that in the comments, I'd love to know. And then you have this formatted long with summary. That's an old Drupalism. The summary stuff, I don't like it. But yeah, let's do that. And let's just um, I'll keep it a basic. Again, we can change this later. Add project, add project details. All right, let's chuck that in. Done. So title, we have description status. Oh, yes, we'll do that. Oh, we'll do that later. Okay, we'll jump around. We're going to be jumping around a fair bit. All right. So the next one is... Let's leave this for now. Let's go back to here. Task. All right. Used for project tasks. Now, my goal is to have the same concept that you know, Jira has, where you have like an epic and then you can have multiple tasks attached to each other. There are a few ways of doing that. And there are a few ways of doing that. Let's just take that off, turn that off, turn that off. All right. Remove body. Create, oh no, actually let's reuse, let's reuse description. Oh, is the help text? 
on the field instance or the field storage? No, it should be on the field instance. So then we go add task details. Let me just double check that. Um, actually, let's go pop that open. Come along in here. Add task details. That's good. Add project details. All right, cool. That's on the field instance. And what I mean by that, because if we come along in here and um, export the code out, you'll see this is what's going to be exported out now. Okay. And here's a bit, um, here's a fields 101. So the field itself, so the field storage, how it's stored, there's only about one version of the field. And this defines the database, I believe, like just the schema for the actual database table because every single database, every single field has its own database table. Then you have the field instance. So the, the field where it attaches the field storage to the entity. So you can see here that we have field description on task, field description on project. Some settings. So if you come along in here, where is it? Anything I believe that's, oh, it's not. I do believe, or maybe it's changed because there used to be a field settings here. Anyway, or maybe that's changed in the latest version of Drupal, but there are certain things that um, are settings on the settings that are set at the field storage level. So you can't you um, ha have it separated out. Anyway, so there you go. There's a bit of, Drupalism 101. All right, let me bring up a few things. So let me, description, I'm just, I'm always worried I'm gonna spell these things wrong. Description, no, that's correct, right? That is correct. Everything kind of looks, looks wrong to me. Yeah, all right, easy, easy, easy. All right, all right, chuck that in, done. Let's do, uh, what is it? Get. All right, cool. Oh, what is it? Git commit. Added content types. Push. All right, done. It's up. All right. That's up there. And if we go back in here, we've done that. Now what we need to do is create an entity reference between the task and the project. Now, I've been umming and ahhing the best way of doing this because there is a module, Drupal Entity Reference Hierarchy. There is this module here, which I've used in the past and it's developed by a great team of people that I do know and I do know the agency that maintains this. But I was a bit worried of using the alpha version. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I, I still, uh, I was playing around with this. And the good thing is we're going to be flexible. For now, we're just going to stick to the simple part. So think of this as kind of like an MVP, okay? And this is part of the Drupal process. You do not know every single module um, that you're going to use from the beginning, unless you have good experience with it and you've built this functionality from scratch. But entity hierarchy is a very powerful module where you, can, where you can essentially develop a hierarchical tree of your content. So you can then say, grab me all ancestors, um, all the ancestors, which could be from, you know, child down and things like that. There's some, some epic stuff you can do. And if you have a look at the code and you, and you can easily, like the APIs to actually pull out information out of this is absolutely brilliant. And I would love to look at that in a bit more detail. But at this point, let's keep it simple. There's a good chance we may have to migrate over to this, but this is part of Drupal. This is part of building things. You have to make decisions and then realize that it's the wrong way. And then hopefully you haven't created 10,000 pieces of content and you don't have to do any custom migration work. But this is part of Drupal. Hey, so yeah, we're going to not use this for now, but we may come back to it. There you go. And there you go. So what we're going to do is come back in task and let's create an entity reference field. 
and where is it? Reference content. And we'll call this one project. Should a task reference multiple projects? No, that is a terrible idea. That is a terrible idea. See, this is the questions you ask yourself all the time. <laughs> Should the field be pluralized or not? Is it projects? Is it projects? <laughs> no, no, it's not. I know, I know what it is. Anyway, no, 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 no. One. Yeah, yeah, one. All right, should I uh, reference one? And we'll reference this and also make it required. No, it's pretty much self-explanatory what that is. All right, so we've made it required. Any references that, and that's it. All right, done. Easy peasy. All right. Let's leave that. Oh, should a project, because I want to have sub-projects. No, I, I, I want to have sub-tasks. Subtasks. Oh, subtasks. So, should the task have, we really should reference this out, shouldn't I? Anyway, I'll do that next time. What I'll do is I'll do a recap in the next video where we actually have models and things like that. All right, what we're gonna do, let's, let's do this. Let's call this one parent task because I always want the parent, no, the task should always reference a parent because then the everyone, all right, yeah, let's just do that. Let's call this parent task. Again, we can change it. It's not, not, not a huge issue. Uh, where is it? Reference, content, done, not required, task. All right, and we'll call this one parent task. That's self-explanatory. All right, cool. All right, so a task can reference a project. That is fine. And a task can reference a parent task. Because what I want to do, and I'll bang my mic and I apologize for that. What I want to do is have a project page where you can define your tasks, chuck them in, and that's it. All right, cool. Done. Now, let's create a content. Uh, no, we need to create a vocab, right? So what we're going to do is create a vocab called statuses, which will have our statuses. Because I want that to be controlled by content. So let's create a new tab, go to taxonomy, and we'll call this one statuses. Statuses, right? What? Oh, no, no, no. What am I, what am I doing? What am I doing? Here we go. Language tutor. What is the plural? No, what is it? Plural of status is it statuses oh statuses let me ask again with the hair why do these i why do these icons have hair oh i feel triggered no i don't all right what is a plural of statuses status yes statuses is a regular plural form using us can be every day, for example, statuses, example, the status of, oh, can either be status or statuses. Oh, really? Status or statuses? Anyway, oh, let's just call it status, honestly. What does, anyway, yeah, let's just call it status. Simple. Oh, I call it status. There we go. And so this will be, are we going to call it a single status or is it going to be a project status? Do you reckon a project status will have, yeah, let's, let's separate this out because I want, I would assume the statuses on a project will be different to a task. It gives you more flexibility. There we go. Project status. This just gives us future. We're, we're just future proofing ourselves. And this is something important without going on a tangent about Drupal. You have to think about Will, well, this comes down to will, for example, a task reference multiple projects or a single project? In, if you ask a client, they'll always definitely in, in the beginning say, oh, no, 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 no. It's only going to be one task or one project. And then, then later it's going to change. So let's just assume that we're going to have separate tasks. All right, we've done that. And the next one is going to be task, task. Status. Status. All right, cool. 
All right, what do you want to call this one? To do, to do, in progress, in progress, and done. Complete, done. No, ready for testing. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, come on. Let's do this the proper way. What is it? Ready for QA. Oh, yeah, there we go. Getting Jira vibes all over this place. Oh, love it. Love my statuses. Ready for review. Oh. Scheduled for release. <laughs> Let's just leave it. Wait, did I add done? Uh, again, this is this is riveting TV, isn't it? Honestly. This f restream is telling me that there are 42 people watching this. Whoa. <laughs> awesome. Oh, no, forget that. All right, cool. Let me go back. All right. Now, the good thing about using taxonomy is that we can go ahead and just reorder this. So come along in here. Because think about it. We might do a thing. Well, if I wanted to then, then kind of ship this as a SaaS application or let other people manage their own instance of it, they can go in here and modify it. And also, we can take things one step further. We can have sub statuses if we wanted to. We're getting a bit ahead of ourselves, I think. Let's just leave it back. Let's just chuck it in all... Back, so to do, progress, in progress, ready for QA, ready for review and done. Now, I'm not going to go too, too, too crazy and create shirt sizes and all that type of stuff, story points. How many story points is this ticket? Is it a one, five, what is it? Five, eight, 13? Oh, I don't know. All those, Fib oh, that, all those Fibonacci sequences. All right, cool. That's that. Let's go back into taxonomy. List again to do in progress oh. and done. And no, project is complete. There we go. Perfect. A project, well, technically, a project is never complete. That's what I say. All right, that's all looking good. To do, complete, in progress. All right, done. Now, let's go back here. What are we on? Task. All right. Come back here, reference, taxonomy. Oh, rookie mistake right there. So we'll call this one just status, but I will change the name because I want to do keep it consistent. So this will be task status, but we don't need to call it a ta task status label, but we'll call the machine name task status. Select one. Yep. Let's make it required. Always needs a task. Set default value. Well, actually, no, let's not. No, let's not make it required. Let's not set a default value because I do know IDs change. And I'm not sure if this uses the UUID. Anyway, that's a long-winded story. Whenever you're dealing with, with taxonomy terms and you have to and you want to use any type of entity that has an ID as config essentially, yeah, you're gonna to have to deal with IDs and deploying IDs and that's a that's a that's a video in itself. All right, let's just leave it at that as it is. Done. Let's go to project. Yep. Come along in here. Create a new field. We're going to reuse a new field. And then, well, again, Ivan, pull yourself together, mate. You need to put on, you need to create the labels first. All right. Status, project status, taxonomy, term, and continue. Project status, make it required, and we're done. All right, brilliant. Now, let's close this off. Everything's looking good. All right, so we have a comment here. Review code, uh, design review before code, or the other way around. <laughs> design reviews. Uh, you know what? Back in the day, we used to get designs of um, 
like designs from designers. Well, what am I talking about? Of course, designers come from designers. And yes, I would go through the design, figure out all the all the common common properties. If it was a blog, an article, and try and figure out the content model based off that. Yeah, you can do that, and that is a good way. And if you do get the designs, that is good. But my issue is in the past, you've often got um, sometimes the designers just don't. You know, they are designers. They're not. They're not Drupal people that are managing and creating content models. And sometimes they can create designs that aren't, that don't translate or translate too well into a Drupal content model. So, so I like to be caught in early on in the design process, especially if they want to want to work with designers. Or what I like to do is just sit down with the client and say, what type of website do you want? What type of fields do you want? And just take it from there. So there's two ways of doing it. Um, but I think just be a little more agile. I think also your content model does change as you're putting in content and as you're building things out. The content model is never fixed and you're always going to have slight tweaks. Sometimes it's going to be massive tweaks unless you've built the exact same site before and you know exactly what type of fields are going to be. Um, and I've often helped the client figure out the content model because I, I because I've told them, you know, yes, we can do it this way, but in the past I've had issues where this will change, this will change. Well, I'm recommending you use this field. I recommend you use this field. So yeah, there's a lot of options there. All right. So now what we're going to do is okay. So we've done all of that, all right? Cool, cool, cool. Uh, what else? Let me have a look at my wait, wait. What did? What did old old Mr. AI give us? All right, let's let's leave start dates end dates out for now. Description assigned to oh yes assigned to the user. Oh yeah okay assigned to due date oh yeah due date yes 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 um assigned to and a due date start date end date okay 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 let's add that in so where are we. Date, date, date and time. Let's put in due date. No, not timestamp. I want a date. Is it date and time? No, let's just try tracking date for now. And that's it. So this is on there. There, perfect. All right. Now, what we've done is we've done all of this. Let's leave it for now. We'll come back to the content types later on. Let me just reorder a few things. So if we come along in here, so status should be up the top. So title, um, due date, below status. And let's put in project below because technically they shouldn't see, well, let's make um, status to be drop down. All right, cool. Let's leave that there. So now if I come along in here, content, what is it? Task. So we have status. Awesome. Due date. Awesome. Description. Project. Then we have that. All right. Done. Now let's go into project, move, status, select, dis description and oh I think that's it all right let's just leave it at that for now then if I come along in here done all right it's consistent awesome okay so we do have a working setup all right all right so we've created our content type we've created all of that now because what I essentially, by the end of tonight, I want to be able to create a project page and then go ahead and create a task. And we can do that and we can see all the tasks from the front end. That's important from the front end. Yes, we're going to be using the default theme, but we're going to change the theme later on. Again, this is all MVP. You know, we're agile, lean, chucking every fancy word out there, every fancy word out there. All right. Uh, 
Okay. All right. So we've done all of that. Let's have a look and see what else we have missing here. Assigned two. All right, let's just chuck in assigned two because that's important. Last but not least, let's go back to task. I do need to put in some development tools. Yeah, I'll do that later. Like Devel and Web Profiler. So let's put this in reference. Assigned to. Call this one task because. Oh, should it be task? No, 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 no. No. <laughs> Will this ever be assigned to, assigned to? All right, no, no, no. Oh, no, it's the same. All right, cool. Assigned to, no, let's just leave it like that, okay? Because that, we, then we can reuse the same assigned to on projects, because then somebody, then it's going to be much easier for us to then see all of our assigned projects and tasks. Yes, let's, let, let's do that. User. Assigned to, not required. Can include anonymous user, no. And then click on save, all right. Okay, that's done. Assigned to, let's move that up. All right, there we go. Let me create a test account. Uh, what is it? Put my name in there. Chuck that in. Now, yeah, content editor. Oh, that's not a valid. Oh. There we go. It's weak. Yes, I know. It's a weak password. Thank you very much. UTC. No, I'll change that later. Not really UTC time. All right. So, now at this point, everything's kind of coming along. And if we... Come along in here. Let's create a project. So the first project is, it has to be Drupal related. Let's call this, you know what? <laughs> Software, ah, why not? Can you, can you give me some examples for some, no, 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 no. Please give me <laughs> some test data. I need some test project IDs and tasks that will be assigned to the project. Just a few IDs for a live stream. P.S. Thanks. Again, have to be nice to the machines. Let's see what it comes up with. Oh, there we go. Implement. Oh, why not, eh? Task management. All right, let's do that. Let's do that. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Easy. Live stream IDs. No, I didn't ask you for live stream ID. Live stream IDs, did I? With a few IDs for our live stream. Well, okay, technically, okay, maybe that was terribly, maybe I cannot speak English properly, but, or write it properly, by the sounds of it, I can't. All right, anyway. All right, fine. Thank you for that. Building a task manager from scratch. Ta discuss the, okay, whatever. Uh, all right, cool. So let's go with a weather app. Yeah, why not? Let's copy these across. Nah, actually, let's do this one. All right, cool. So this is going to be our task. I'm just going to create a few test ones to do. I just don't want this to be too too much Drupal. Um, can you give me a description? Oh, yeah. Give me... Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Give me a, a description for the... Give, give me some description text as well, please, for the task blah, blah, blah. okay let's see let's see what it comes up with just so i've got some data in there oh it's thinking it's thinking yeah this claude 3 opus is a little slower i must admit the task manager all right i'll take that while it's while it's thinking let's chuck that in there we go so new first task 
to do. Saved. Done. Brilliant. Awesome. All right. And let's go back here. Task. To do. User key features user authentication. Task manager. Oh, I do like that. Oh, I like that. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's looking good. That's looking good. All right. Yeah. Use the task manager to manage your tasks for building the task manager. <laughs> what? Was it actually saying that? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe the system's hallucinating. Use the task. You know what? I, that, that is a funny comment there in YouTube right, right now. Yeah. Use the task manager. That is something that I'll probably copy in. Like my brain just would not pick up on that. It, it will, it will eventually after a while. Anyway, let's just chuck this stuff in. All right. Let's chuck this stuff. All right. Let's just create a few uh, projects. There we go. Task manager. Let's assign this to our project. We're done. All right. That's the first task. Let's go back. Refresh. Next. Task prioritization. Ah, let's just chuck in this one. All right. Cool. Okay. To do, to do, copy this in. There we go. I am seriously waiting for the day where I can use some type of G GPT prompt and it just runs my browser for me. Like that shouldn't be too hard. If anyone wants to create that, I will pay top money for that. I want to tell them, Go ahead and create some test te uh, test data in Drupal right now and just do exactly what I'm doing and just does it for me. That's what I want. All right, see you later, mate. Thanks a lot for being in the stream. Wait, can I actually like things in this stream? I don't know. All right, cheers, mate. Well, I'm just typing. All right. So we've done that. Visualize, save. No, what? Need our task manager. Task done. All right. Easy. All right. So now we've done that. Awesome. Now we need to... Oof. All right. I think at this point we've done all the uh, content modeling part. Let me open up a water bottle, my water bottle because it squeaks. We've done all the content modeling part. And this is where I don't like to spend too much time on just one thing. I like to iterate. So let's work on the front end now. And we're not going to build out a custom theme. What I want to do is build out the actual views because what I want is a table where it shows you all the tasks and then you can easily go ahead and create and, and easily create all of these tasks um, by clicking on a button and then going in there and creating it. Because you think about it, you will have a list of projects come along in here, doesn't work of course, you have a list of projects, you go on your projects, you see all your tasks, then you can easily click on create task, blah, 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 okay? You want that flow. You don't want somebody to have to come in here and be like, oh, well, I need to create a project, need to create a task and go manually create it. That's not how you do it. Of course, it would be great if we can have a little pop-up where you can click on it and it automatically pre-populates. Yeah, just pre-populates everything. And we and we, and we should be able to do that. We should be able to do that. So let's, so let's go ahead and try that. So first things first, we will create the view. And now at this point, I'm not screwing around with authentication and things like that. That we're going to do later on. Because I know that there is going to be a fair bit of um, setup for authentication and testing. And I, and I also want to set up testing as well. Why not? All right. Let's do this. Let's jump into views. And we'll create a projects page. Projects. Project. 
page, projects, create it as a table, and then, um, uh, yeah, let's add it to the, actually, no, we'll do that ourselves. Yep, uh, let's, just, okay, let's just leave it at that for now. Uh, view, published. We're gonna have to also deal with the published cases as well, but again, we'll deal with that later. All right, let's add in created, authored on date, changed, that's important. And I'll put in operations, what is it? Uh, operations, all right, let's chuck that in. Authored on, uh, change it to created date. Let's change it to created. Date format, I uh, do, not, do not like these long dates. Let's, let's stick to a standard format. I, I so prefer these standard ISO formats, not the, not the ones where you're trying to figure out, is it month or day or day or month? Changed and okay, all right, perfect. Come along, along down here, we can see our tasks, our, our project. All right, nice. Now, I can come along in here, projects, projects, and let's add this to menus, edit, projects, projects. There we go. Can I actually search for it? No. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Done. Okay. So now that's over there in the header menu. Sweet. Then come along in here. And what we can do is, so now we have a little list of projects. Let me actually chuck in one extra. Oh, really, I really do need a second project right here just for testing. All right, let's go back to, Good old GPT. Um, all right, let's let's chuck let's chuck this one in. Create a weather app. This one's in progress. And oh yes, yes, yes. Integrate. Oh, just put in a basic basic item like that. And let's leave that as it is. Come back here. What else do we need? So change this and that. Oh, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. Oh no, status. Oh, I forgot about that. Let's chuck in status. Uh, status will be on projects. Does that need to be a link? Let's leave that off for now. And what we can do, let's reorder these. Author on, status right there. Let's chuck in some exposed filters. That's important. Project status. Drop down. Oh no, sorry, project status, sorry. No, 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 no. Let's go back again. Status. What is it? No, where is it? Project status. That's what I want. Project status. Drop down. Expose, we'll call this one, yeah, we'll call this one project status. Yep, all right, done. And we can also filter by what title as well. Let's make it exposed and I finally contains, all right. Let's reorder that. <laughs> see, what, see what I mean? Drupal is click-based development. Reorder, move that status up. Don't worry about that. These two published and content types, that's hidden. There we go. Awesome. All right, cool. Filter by to-do. There we go. Oh, we need a reset. Oh, come on. Where's that reset? Go back here. Reset button, there we go, that's what I want. Okay. This is refreshing. Oh. Where's the reset button? Okay, let's do that again. Oh, because I have... 
because I haven't actually tested anything. Reset only appears after the fact. All right, cool. There we go. Awesome. Oh, all right. Bit of side building. All right. So we've got this. Awesome. Now, we need to come along in here. And I want to now see a table of all tasks that are attached to this project. Let's do that. Hmm, I'm just trying to think. Maybe the description should be on the side up the top. No, it should be above. All right. Yes, 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 yes. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking out loud. All right. Let's go into views again. And what I'll do, well, before I... No, 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 that's fine, it's fine. Go in here. Let's call this one tasks. Select task. No, this will be actual block. Well, mm, what is it going to be? No, no, okay. No, we'll, we'll build this out. We'll build this out. The first, the, first, the first display doesn't matter, okay? Task. So we'll call this one the block title. Yeah, well, let, okay, let's just leave this. I know exactly what I'm going to make. So this will be tasks by project. Okay. So this will be, so tasks by project. And what I like to do is also put, put proper machine names in here. Tasks by project. Done that. Block name. Should be the same as that, right? List views. Ah, oh, that's fine. Whatever. Okay. So we've done that, done that, done that. Now, to test everything out, I want to, because I do know these two tasks are assigned to the other project, I do want to create one more few of these tasks for our weather app. Let's go along in here. Task in progress. And we'll call this one, what is it? Weather. No. Task. Detail. Dot, dot, dot. And next. Come along in here. Task. Where's that? Other one. Design. Uh, that's a bit too long. Let me chop that in there. Design. Uh, develop UI. Develop UI. Yeah, keep it simple. And this one's ready for QA. Woohoo. Web. Done. All right, cool. Okay. Cool. Done. Assign uh, to... Assign this one to myself a few. You know, why not? There we go. And come back there. All right. Cool. We're getting there. This now comes the fun part where you kind of like glue everything together. This is honestly the fun part. You've done all the little things and then it's great when you can create like a like basic flow. And and this is just like a nice, you know, UI for building applications. Like it still baffles me why Drupal isn't widely, you know, widely adopted for like low code functionality because yeah, just, just stuff that you can do with it. It's absolutely amazing. Because remember, we haven't touched any code at this point. I haven't touched any code. Anyway. All right. So we've done all of this. So we got our structure. Now what we need to do. So if we come into projects, we need to set up also the breadcrumb. Need to figure that out. Anyway, that's for another to do. I will add that to the GitHub repo. Um, maybe I can do that now. Nah. Do I want to spend time screwing around with that? Add breadcrumb. Oh, why not? There we go. Task, add breadcrumb. This is all in public. So yeah, add breadcrumb to pages. Labels, leave it now, done. There we go, easy. All right, need to add that. Keep that for later. So, got this. Come along in here. Now we need to sort this stuff out because what I want to do is have the view, okay? So this is view, what is it? 
sort out. Oh, another thing. Sorry. This is all coming to me right now. New task. Set up URL aliases. Configure URL aliases. Set up path auto and URL aliases. There we go. For example, what is it? Um, slash projects slash node title. Let's say for tasks. There we go. Tasks. Or well, are they going to be a parent under the what is what does Jira do? Oh no. No, no, no. Jira has special numbers. No, this needs to be task ID. Maybe we need to stick to IDs. I don't know. Anyway, we're in progress. Who's joined us? Oh, oh. I see who's in I, I see who's in the comments now on YouTube. We're in trouble now. As a Drupal person, I don't know what other, other CMSs offer. <laughs> it's so good to hear your broad perspective. <laughs> I think I think that's a joke. This who's it? Bevan's going places. I think that's a joke. Ah, funny guy, funny guy. Yeah, this will be because you want, because remember, you want to be able. No, 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 no. Okay. Set up no, configure path aliases for um configure path aliases for projects. Actually, no, forget this. For projects and then configure. Configure standard URL for tasks because I want to have like a prefix in it. Configure uh, URL for tasks. Okay. For example, what is it? Prefix, prefix, then ID, something like that. I don't know. That's what I want to do. I'll be curious because it's always good to then reference tasks that way. Uh, take a compliment. Thanks a lot, mate. Thanks a lot. Um, that's another thing we, we want to do inline task linking. Oh, there we go. See that everything's spewing out of my head right now. It's verbal diarrhea. Inline task linking. Ability to link to tasks inline to link to tasks in line. I'll probably be like, what the hell did I just write? Anyway, there we go. Let's just leave that out, okay? All right, enough, 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 Ivan. Concentrate. All right, so what are we doing? All right, so we're doing this stuff. So right now, it is displaying all of the tasks. And what I'll do, let me actually fix this up so we can see stuff in action. Let's save this. Let's go into views. Where is it? Settings. And let's turn on the query. And what we can do. And another thing I want to do. Hey, 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 hey. another thing I want to do is what is it? Um, install web profiler Drupal. Web profiler Drupal. I'm not signing in. I want to install this module. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I want to install. All right, awesome. Come along in here. Ddev. Install it. Is it going to install Devel? It is, right? Devel. Yeah, it is going to install Devel. That's fine. Okay. Let's install it. Come along in here. And it hopefully nothing fails. No, web profiler, there we go. And now what we get is a pretty cool little thing down here at the bottom. Hey, I've done a full video on this, search for development tools. This is pretty cool. Because now what you can do, if we go and come back in here, well, let's clean up a few, a few of these tabs. All right, tasks. Well, first of all, we can see the query here. 
and we should be able to see the query down here. 100, 196 queries. Jeez, that's a lot. All right, so now our query is showing us all status, that's fine. But now I want to adjust this query so that it only shows us the views based on the site you're on. Because what we're essentially going to do is we're going to embed this block, which displays this table, which displays everything to us here. Okay, we're going to embed it directly in here on the project. So what we need to do is come along in here, go to relationship, or no, advanced contextual filters, search for project, and set a default, so it's gonna get it from the URL. What's the exception? Um, basic validation, so what's the validation? Uh, dun, 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 dun. If you can't find it, so action to take if no filter is found, we'll just hide the view. If no filter is found, no, 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 what is it? No, no it's always gonna be, oh, let's just leave that as it is. All right, cool. So now if we chuck in, what is it, node four? If we chuck in node four, we can see here, where's our left join? There we go, left join. And this should show us just the tasks which are assigned to the project. Very important. If we open this up, open this up. Weather, weather. Cool, thumbs up, it's working. It's working brilliantly. Okay, that's working. Now to double check that, let's grab the node ID from our task. What is that, node one? Pop this one in there, update, node one, task progress, task creation. Boom, done, working. Okay, get in there. We are getting there. Okay, let's save this. Let's now quickly, I'm gonna smash through this. I apologize if this is the first time you're using Drupal or seeing me play with Drupal. I'm gonna be smashing through this pretty quickly. But let's just go through, uh, through this table. So we've created that. Let's create um, uh, status that changed that, authored on. Let's also put in assigned to operation columns. I'm just creating a whole bunch of, so I can just go through all of these. Oh yeah, we can put in a views bulk operation. Oh man, there we go. Assigned to, yep, leave that, link it. Authored on, let's change this to authored on is created. Why did Drupal change that? They used to be created and changed, simple. Anyway, change, see, change is still changed. Yeah, operations column, um, I'll just leave that. Well, we can change that. Status, no, oh, yeah, leave that. All right, I like to keep things consistent. So let's go back here to projects. So it's title, all right, so it's those ones. All right, cool, let's fix that up. Status is first. Assigned to, okay, okay, we have assigned to and then the rest of them, okay, that's fine. Put that in, brilliant. Assigned to, update. Oh yeah, that's nothing. Oh, let's put in some em empty text. Um, uh, message, what are we gonna call this? Empty text, uh, text. We'll call it text area, add no tasks. But they shouldn't be embedding this into an actual, um, yeah, they shouldn't really be embedding this into a task. Anyway, oh, actually they might. Oh no, we can just clone it. Anyway, sorry, I'm just thinking out loud as usual. All right, done. Let's create a title here. We'll call this one task and hit save. Filters, status, 
project uh, task status and title. Very, very, very important. Done. Project task. I uh, know. Exposed. Status. Yep. Expose. Title. Title contains. Done. Let's reorder this. Pop this above. Apply on the side. Select reset and we're done. Okay. All right. We're getting there. We are getting there. Chuck that in. We get a nice little task assigned to status. We can filter, see all the to do's. Well, no, actually, we shouldn't have no tasks returned because if they filter, yeah. So we do need empty text because when they search for things and they can't find a task. Mm -hmm. All right. Done. Okay. Now let's embed this into the front end. So this should kind of work. We'll call this one tasks. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm, just trying to think. Uh, yeah, all right, cool, cool, cool. All right, okay, we're getting there. Done. Okay. Oh, another thing we can add is ability to add comments to task. Add comments to tasks. I'm going to spend the next two, six months doing videos about this. There we go. Look at that. Can I do like a Kanban here? Like first version one. What do they do here? Templates. Link to template. I don't know. What's a new template? Is there a way to group things? Project. So what's a project now in GitHub? I have no idea. Like a spreadsheet, projects give you a live canvas to filter, sort. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'll, nah, I'll do with that later. Can't be bothered dealing with it now. All right, cool. All right. So these are all the milestones. Task. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, cool. All right. What are we doing? Let's get back to work. So we've done that, done that, done that. Now I want to add it. I want to add this to the front end. So how do we do that? Well, I'm just looking at a comment. Uh, so how, how would you pronounce that? What is, um, who makes Jira? Um, At Atlassian. That's right, I was gonna, like their name, like when, I, when, when they first came around, because Atlassian was started in Sydney and they actually sponsored a whole bunch of um, things back in the day. So I went, I think on, what was it, Clando? Sussex Street. They used to have an office in Sussex Street. I mean, I'm talking like two, like the noughties back then. And um, I could never remember the name. But yeah, you say Atlassian Ivan. Atlassian. That's a joke. Don't worry. Um, Bevan's going places. I get it's a joke. Thanks a lot, mate. Thanks a lot. All right. Uh, so we've done all of that. Let's... Oh, actually. Do we need a pager? Let's adjust this to say... And it's no 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 no. Let's put in a pager, mini pager, and we'll also put in the ability to view all as well. That makes life a lot easier because that is actually pretty cool. Come along in there. Oh, if it's more, but yeah. All right, done. So that's all done. All right. Now we need to somehow add it in here. I'm just trying to think. Uh, my brain is ticking along. How do we do that? There's a few ways. Let's use Layout Builder. I did not think I'll get this far. How long have I been streaming for? An hour and 35 minutes. Oh, I, really, I really should go to bed. But no, I shouldn't. I should, I should smash through this because I want the flow built. So Layout Builder. Come along in here. And then come in Structure. Prod. No, what is it? Content types, come along here. Oh, what's this Devel? Oh, okay, cool. Hmm. I do have Devel installed. All right, let's enable the full content view mode. So full content is used, for people who don't know, the full content is used for this view mode here. It is a hard-coded view mode that Drupal hard codes in. So if you don't have full content view mode, it's going to default to the default, but I don't like it when it does that. All right, done that, nice. 
let's hope all of this works pretty well. And I do hope the, yeah, everything kind of trickles through. Anyway, you'll see what I mean. All right, let's now set this up. Oh, damn it. I want different columns. I want like one to be one column wide and one another one to be three column wide. And I can't be bothered. I'm not doing that right now. Anyway, let's stick to two columns for now. Oh, actually. Oh, that's exactly what I want. Didn't even think of that. Oh. Huh. So you can actually select the column widths. That's cool. There really should be a little message in here saying adjust, you know, multiple columns. Anyway. Yeah, that's cool. So what do I want? Do I want the left or right to be uh, 75? Let's try this and see. Oof, no, 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 that's a bit too much. Do it this way. All right, yeah, all right, cool. Status, put the status in there. Put the description in there. Let's get rid of this. Now, can you actually change the section? Interesting, you can't reorder the section. Why can't you do that? I've never noticed that in views. Sorry, in, in Layout Builder. You cannot move the section. Huh. That's very interesting. That is very interesting. Anyway, I guess you can just move things around. All right, so we've done this. Let's save this. Let's check out our project. Is this our project? What, is this, what does this look like? Nice. Oh, yeah, looks, looks nice. We've got a little sidebar. All right, now comes the fun part. I want to add in the view down here. I really hope this works. Again, I've not tested this. We're doing this live. Come along in here. One column. What is this called? Tasks by project. Override title. No, let's just leave that as it is. And let's leave that. All right. Yep. Leave that. Please, please, please. Yes. It's working. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. So now we see our tasks and we can filter. We can straight away filter. What, is, what does this do? That refreshes. Let's, uh, let's fix that up so that it's what? Ajax. So everything is done through Ajax. So if I type in here, to do. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay. That reset, that's a full reset. So if I go there, oh, that's nice. All develop. Well, oh, look at that. Smooth as butter. Look at that. Look at that. And you come along in here and you go in there and edit it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. This is, this is coming along nicely. It's coming along nicely. Okay. Now, what I want to do is add in the same, well, let's fix up. Let's come along in here and do the same for task. Uh, oh no, sorry, that's not set up. All right, come back in task. Enable, oh no, 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 not on there. Uh, what is it? Scroll down, full content. Go to full content, very important. Enable layout builder, manage layout builder. Oh, let's create it up here. Two column. There we go. So description will be there. Project. Status is above due date and assigned. Do we even need project? We know, you, uh, uh, yeah, why not, let's leave it in there. Then 
we'll leave that task out for now. Let's remove that one. We'll leave this in. We'll leave it in because what I want, come along in here. There we go. Awesome. Now, I want to see subtasks. Let's go back in our view and let's go ahead, duplicate tasks by parent tasks. All right, let's see how this works. Because everything should work, all we need to do is change this. But before we do that, we need to create some tasks. Let's go ahead. Oh, no, not there. What am I doing? Let's call this one 1.1. 1. 1. 1. No, version 1. Done. Okay. Now come along in here. Task. Call this one point two. Details go here. Due date. Maybe we do need to add a due date to project as well. Anyway, I'm just thinking out loud as usual. All right, project. Uh, interesting. Does this, should this, all right, this needs to be sorted out. That really needs to be sorted out. Task. Task will be project. All right, we do need to sort this out. Anyway, we'll figure it out. You see, this is where entity reference hierarchy really does play an important part, but we can work around that. All right. So now if we come along in here, we have these tasks. Now this is technically a subtask. So should we display subtasks in the task? That is an excellent question. We'll figure that out later. It's one of those things, eh, deal with it later. But these are all the questions you need to figure out. All right, now what I wanna do is quickly just build this out. So let's duplicate task by parent task. Then you come along in here. This should be, well now are we gonna override this? Yes. Override that. Remove. And what is that? Parent task. Ta no, parent task. Fixed. Yep, yep. All right, done. Nice. And what is this task name? Bring that in here. Oh, no, that's really taken. All right. Uh, parent task. All right. Cool. Now, if we, what's the parent task in here? Oof, did not show that. Okay, that's a bit of a all right, node five. So if I now come along in here and just type in node five, I should only see one task. No tasks, why is that? Because I selected, oh wait, because I'm on the wrong one. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, for a second I was like, why is it not working? I'm on the wrong one, all right. That's all working. You can see here, we're only getting one task return, which is a subtask. Okay, we're getting there. We are getting there. All right. So now all we need to do is come back into here and well, let's go to structure, content types. 
full content. Now we should add in block task, but by parent. Then now if come on here, no tasks. We need to figure this out. Like we can, we can, yeah. So it only shows parent come on in here. There we go. We have a subtask there. Boom. All right. Easy. So now I have a subtask showing. Okay. The next thing I want to do is create what, what's the URL for this? No, the other path, the task, uh, button, 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 submit buttons. Oh, it's just dot buttons. All right. So if I come along in here and in the header, and this one's for this one, we can come along in link to display. Is there, a, is there a link button? Button. What I want to do is I want to add a button in there which says add class. No, sorry, add, uh, add, add something. No, that's not it. Remove. Link, come on. Rendered entity, no. Ah, oh, fine, I'll do this. Can I add in classes here? Sometimes the links are a bit iffy on links. Link classes, li, li, href, 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 href. No, no, I can't. All right, let's go full HTML. All right, here we're gonna go. So href. Uh, again, we can fix this up later. Let's just do this for now. Class equals button create task. This will be node slash add slash task. This will change though. I do know that. Why isn't that appearing? So in a header, oh, maybe that doesn't appear in, no, 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 that should actually appear in the headers. Global task. Create task, oh, I'm just double check, save that. Why isn't this bit of text appearing in there? Is it because it's Ajax? Huh. Maybe because it's a block, no, it's only saving. All right, let's have a quick look here. There should be a link that's in the header. but it is not appearing more. Wait, wait, what's that error? Can't load resources, yeah, it's fine. All right, let's just quickly change this. Let me turn off Ajax and see if that causes, that's causing a problem. No task. That's interesting. For some reason, it is not showing up this header. Unfiltered text, it's just put in. Oh, it's showing that. Oh, God. Anyway, that's fine. Let's turn on Ajax and see if it does it with Ajax. Anyway. Let's remove that. Let's chuck this in. Wait, what? No, what do I do? No, not there. Let 
There we go. That's what I want. Create task. Come along in here. Have a nice little create task. Now, this is going to take us straight here. What I wanted to do is pre-populate the project and the task. Now, is that going to work? Is that going to work? Okay, let's go here. Drupal pre-populate entity reference. Maybe this is it. Pre populate. I did see this somewhere. Pre populate. Yes, 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 yes. This is what I want. This is what I want. Minim minimally. It's minimally maintained. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Usage. How does this work with entity reference fields? Add edit. Add a destination. ID. All right. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> All right. Right, we can probably keep this for another time. Keep this going for another time. All right. Well, let's now just quickly come along in here. No tasks there. Come along in here. And let's fix up this view. So we can do the same thing. Header. Unfiltered. Actually, no. Let's override this. Apply, unfiltered, there we go. Because I also want the ability to then redirect back out. So when you redirect, when you fill out the form, quickly fill out the form and then jump back out. Cool, so we can come along in here and say, test this to do and then it automatically has the right project which is the weather app so what is it weather done go back to our project and we have it there and that's it and then you come along here and you're like well we're done cool it would be good if you can, or you should, should be able to modify from here. Or you come along in here and then just say, actually, we're done. Done. Boom. Done. You could do it like that. There's many ways of doing it. You could even, you could use these um, contextual links. Anyway. All right, let's just leave it at that for now. At right there. Nearly hitting just under two hours. So there is a few things we need to do. Of course, the simple ones are pre-populate. Let me chuck that in there. This module in there. All right, um, create, yes, build, create task, button. Okay, look at using pre-populate to populate the project slash parent task. All right, before we finish up, let's do another config export. Done. All right. Config. Worked on content types. There we go. The most great commit message in the world. Pushed. Done. Look at the code. Look at the commits. Let's check out the commits right now, eh? Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Ah, it's just all content. It's all just config changes. 
That's all what it is, really. <laughs> anyway, all right, cool. Let's leave it at that. And we'll catch up next time. I'm not really sure when uh, we'll... Well, I like to do this weekly, especially this project, like work on this project weekly. But I will also, you know, still work on other web, other like live streams and things like that. But yeah, we're getting there. And I just want to build out the, the flow. That's the most important thing. Oh, where is it? Back here, where's the tasks? How to handle subtasks. There we go. Handle subtasks. Should they appear on the project? Should they appear on the, what is it? Tasks by project view? Question mark. There you go. All right. I think that is it. All right, um, question, why didn't you use default display mode and enable, why didn't you use default? Yes, I don't like using the default display mode because the default display mode is used whenever, is just used as the default, whereas full content is only used on this particular display. So you know exactly what's going to happen. Because if, for example, Let's go here. Default is used when none of these view modes are actually set up. So you may get some funny errors or if you have customized your view modes and you're still using the default and you haven't checked, say, search index, it'll Drupal will see if search index is enabled. If it's not enabled, it just loads up the default. So you can pull in all types of bugs. I just like to use full content because I know Full content is exactly what's going to be used here. Any customizations will appear here. So I just like to use full content. But again, it's just a personal preference. If you want to use default, by all means, just use it. But that's my that's my that's my preference. Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot for everyone coming. There won't be a Thursday night stream because I will be at Drupal South, which is a conference in Sydney. So if you are in Drupal South, come and find me. Um, I'll be more than happy to talk about Drupal and talk about anything really. So thank you very much. All right. Take care, everyone. See you later.